Going to the theater opening night and watching a great movie surrounded by fellow fans is a fantastic experience. This is a rare thing. This isn't something that happens week to week. Hell, barely happens once a year, which makes reflecting on it all that much more special. The movie experience I'll be talking about today is one that only happened a few years back, 2019. The film, Avengers Endgame. Before I really dive into this tale, I would really only be hurting myself if I didn't mention you could subscribe to Adam Does Movies and stay caught up on all the new videos I post almost daily at this point. It's a wild ride, I'd like you to be on it with me. And I believe Sheila has prepared some sort of a subscribe animation that will show up once in a while to let you know you can, you in fact can do that. If she did her job correctly, Sheila! She's not even in the room right now, wow, okay. April 26, 2019. We are on pins and needles for Avengers Endgame to start. The final chapter in Tony Stark's journey. Is he gonna live? Is he gonna die? Is he gonna transcend time and space? Come back as some sort of a new character altogether? We don't know! It's the MCU, anything's possible. I had a good crew of people going with me too. It's been lined up for weeks. One of my friends I've known since the third grade and I'm no spring chicken, so that's a forged friendship that's been lasting the test of time. We decided to make a meal out of it and meet early to have dinner before the movie. So we headed on over to Freddy's, which is a burger joint, it's a chain. They got some decent food, good fries, good shakes, good service, good smiles, good fun, good friends. It's a lot of, none of that's in their slogan. I just talking to talk. We have a couple hours before the film, so we pull up a quaint booth in the corner, get our food, start to chat about all the exciting events that could potentially unfold, and where things will take place at after Infinity War, and all the previous MCU phase films. And then my buddy Derek hits me with a Hulk buster sized punch to the face! Let's punch in for this. He hasn't seen over half of the MCU films prior. What?! How? Why? Why, Derek? You don't even have kids! What the hell are you doing with your life? Besides staying healthy, being a successful electrical engineer, and being married, what are you doing? Movie fans, I know you can relate to this. I know you have this experience. There is nothing more fulfilling than almost taking part in the first time of someone witnessing something. For instance, you have a song that you really like, or a band that you really like, that's not maybe the, that popular, maybe they fly under the radar, maybe they're underground. And you have a buddy that you know will really like this music, so you play it with them, and now you are almost part of the band. You're, you're like the agent, discovering this, this crew, and you're showing it to your friend, and you just sit back and you're like, excited to see their ears perk up, and their eyes widen, and they start to bob to the music. You did that. You brought that to them. That's the same with movies. I couldn't wait to show my kids Harry Potter. I couldn't wait to show them Star Wars. I couldn't wait to show my daughter The Matrix and she freaking loved it. She's awesome. So to experience a new movie with friends, knowing that one of them hasn't seen half of the catalog going into the new one, we're already missing some of that connection. We're not gonna be on the same playing field going in. I'm up here, he's right there. He needs to get up, come on up bud. Come up with me on cloud nine. We'll look down at this film and bask in all its glory instead of looking up at it wondering, I wonder when I'm a big boy if I like it more. No, you won't unless you see the goddamn movies. I have a laptop in my vehicle. So I make a Cheerios beeline to the car, grab it, go back to Freddy's, find an outlet, whoosh, plug that thing in, zzz, run the wire to the computer, click, snap that thing in, woof, flip the laptop, bam. Hit the button that brings up the videos because I have access to them thanks to Netflix, I believe, at the time. I don't think it was, it wouldn't have been Disney Plus yet. I don't think they were a thing. I don't know how I had them, but I did. So now we were on a mission to figure out exactly which films Derek hadn't seen, decide which ones were an absolute must going into Endgame, and then determine which portions of the films he needed to watch. Uh, how much backstory we had to give to each of these characters, and really lead him down a road that would set the stage for Endgame properly. We got the basics out of the way. He had seen Iron Man, he had seen Thor, I don't think he had seen Captain America, but he got the idea, he gets the character, it's not too complicated. Hadn't seen Black Panther, because, you know, racist. Hadn't seen Captain Marvel, because, sexist. Hadn't seen Ant-Man, because, smallest. 
and he hadn't seen Infinity War. What are we supposed to do with this information? How are we supposed to process this and proceed? It was really a grab bag of different things. We went onto Wikipedia, we broke down the plots for him that way. It was easier than trying to regale everything off of memory. We then showed him clips of prominent sequences from Age of Ultron, from Civil War. And then we watched a large portion at Freddy's while eating our meal of Infinity War. The last, I'd say, hour or so. I mean, what are we supposed to do, you know? I believe he saw Guardians of the Galaxy, so that was helpful. That was at least something. At one point, I believe he wanted to get up to go get a refill on his water cup, and I said, Nye, I'll get it for you. Anything you need, we will do. You want some extra ketchup for your fries so you can dip them while you're eating? I'm on it. You want some ice in that water? Sure, I'll go get it, you asshole. Just watch the movie. Minutes are flying by like seconds. Before we know it, we have to get to the theater. We have to get out of Freddy's and being good members of society, we pick up our tray with our food, we bring it over to, to toss it in the garbage. As we're waddling on over to the garbage can to dispose of our meal, uh, we couldn't help but notice that there were some fellow nerds wearing Marvel t-shirts. One of them said, um, I noticed you guys were watching some of the films. Has he really not seen most of them? Why even go to the movie? I didn't even hesitate. I spin towards him, throwing some of the food remnants onto the ground. A third of a shake splashes on the floor. A kid walking by <laughs> slips. <laughs> He's dead, broken neck. The mom's hysterical. Oh my God, my baby boy. Shut up. <laughs> Elbow to the nose, she goes down, and I turn to that son of a bitch who insults my friend Derek. Whoosh! I take him out with a tray to the face. He goes down harder than Black Widow did when she traded places with Hawkeye and sacrificed her life for the good of the entire universe! Baskin, says one of the other dumbasses. Not cool, man. He starts to run away, but I'm not gonna let him ice my friend out like that. So speaking of ice, I pick up a cube off the ground. <laughs> Goes through the back of his head. <laughs> blows out the front of his eye. I run around the side, catch the ice in the air. Whoops. <laughs> Smash it through the other eye that's still alive. And now it's not. Unlike Thor, he's not getting any replacements for those guys. And he falls to the ground, crumples over. The overweight one tries to run to the door, pulling up his pants that are sagging. I Harley Quinn his ass, jump up into the air, land on his shoulders, whoosh, twist, snapping the neck. He goes down. As we start to slow motion walk toward the door, in my mind, another person gets up, ready to jump into the fray. I look over at him, thinking about how I'm going to take this asshole out. And then I notice his t-shirt, release the Snyder Cut on the chest. And then I look in his eyes and say, I don't need to kill you. You're already dead inside. Let's go, boys. We head out. Sheila, now would be a great time when editing to put the subscribe up if you could. Thanks, doll. We finally get to the theater. The place is packed to the brim. People are super pumped for the movie to start. I get in line for the concession. Derek offers to buy my food because of what I did for him back at the restaurant. The, you know, showing him the movies, not the killing of five or six people. I look up at the options and I just think to myself, this is so fun coming to the theater and paying $7.50 for a pop. Thank you for the cup. Nothing in it. Oh cool, I get to fill it myself over at one of the four machines that stills working. Sweet. Let me get behind this older gentleman that's never seen a machine like this in his life and has no idea how to turn his iPad on. So this should go really well as he tries to touch all the different bubbles and doesn't realize that to get the ice out, you just push in on that little lever down below. The one old school mechanic on it is the thing that gives him the most trouble. Perfect. We make our way into the theater and get our seats. People are ablaze with ideas. People are talking, they're chatting it up. A lot of assholes on their phones, but it's okay. Movie hasn't started yet. I'm not gonna freak out. So while Derek isn't up here with us yet, we did inch him closer. And that's all we were trying to do. Get him even more excited for the film. Get him even more pumped up for the outcome of some of these favorite heroes of ours. Right before the movie starts, the father comes in looking for his wife and child. He calls him out by name. Betty? Garrett? Betty? Has anyone seen a wife and kid? We, I was supposed to meet them here. Uh, I missed dinner at Freddy's. I had to work late, but I made it to the movie to watch with my wife and child. It's his first movie experience. I really wanted it to be a magical one. We've seen all the Marvel movies. 
I just start to slump down a little lower in my seat because, you know, that's the, the child and wife I killed at the Freddy's. The film starts. Silence in the audience. You could hear a pin drop in there. No phones lighting up. No one gabbing about plot points. And everyone was 100% there in the moment. For the next three plus hours or whatever this thing ended up being, everyone was celebrating the film in style, cheering at the right moments, laughing at the right moments, crying at the right moments. What kind of forever? It truly was an amazing experience and a fitting end to Robert Downey Jr.'s character, Iron Man. I'm sure he'll probably be back in the future, but still. And theaters all across the world were freaking out at fan moments. The portals opening up on your left. The Wakandans coming through. I mean, it, it was it was chilling. Chilling stuff. And the battle that ensued was great. It was satisfying. I just, you don't get moments like this often. You have to relish them. And then look back and say, yeah, I was there. I was part of that journey. I was part of that magic that played out on the big screen. And this is why I'm such a huge movie fan. I'd like to think at this point in time, Derek has seen all of the Marvel films, but I know that's not the case. I can only hope that he was as impacted and that that was as special to him as it was to me. And I could call and ask him, but we're not that close. Thanks for watching the video. Obviously, I made some of that up. You know, it's just fun to to add a little bit of flair into the storytelling. It's a fisherman's tale, right? I just really wanted to engage with you about how cool that experience was seeing Endgame and hear what you thought in the comments below. So please comment below with your story of Endgame. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And hopefully I'll see you real soon. I just start to slump down a little lower in my seat because, you know, that's the, the child and wife I killed at the Freddy's. I feel a little bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> so fucked. <laughs> Thanks again for watching the video. Hopefully it gives you a little bit more insight into why I do this channel and why I love talking movies so much. It's, it's a passion of mine. It's a hobby. It's somewhat of a job for me. And if you want to show your support, please join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Adam Does Movies. You could, you could join for just a dollar and just say, hey, Adam, you know what? I love what you're doing. Stay the course. Here's a dollar a month or five dollars a month or ten. That would be awesome. You can join here on YouTube too via the join button. So there's options. You get exclusive videos every month. Um, I, I try to do as much as I can for those people. So thank you.